Hello guys of United Rock Nations. We are an amazing company with Sony of BOD. How are you? I'm doing great. How have you been? Very well, thank you. Uh, we are here to talk about Veritas, the new album that will be released the 3rd May. Uh, how is your feeling about this new album? I'm excited. It's been a long time coming. You know, we've, we've been sitting on this record for a while now, just waiting for it to get out. Um, we had a different approach, releasing four different uh, songs before the actual record comes out. So that was new for us. Um, so uh, just from the feedback and the responses, uh, it looks like we might be doing something okay, you know? Absolutely, <laughs> so, absolutely. So we're excited for everybody to hear the whole record. Fantastic. So this year you celebrate 32 years of career. Mm -hmm. um, when you created the band on 92, did you think that you would be there after all these years? No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just never a thought, you know, but we also never thought that we'd leave San Diego. So, you know, it, everything has been um, a bonus, <laughs> you know, playing around the world, you know, selling a lot of records. It's just all that to us is, is a bonus and it's a, it's a blessing. So to be here after all these years, it's uh, we don't we don't take it for granted. Absolutely. So uh, after third album, this one is the 11th, uh, the 11th uh, mm -hmm. album. Uh, Wolf Bernardo is not on the band anymore. Um, can you tell us the reason why uh, he's not on the band anymore? I mean, I wouldn't say he's not in the band anymore. He, we, we've said this before that he's he, he'll always be the drummer of this band. Um, but we're all going through stuff right now that it just it takes it takes personal attention to, to dive in and to figure it all out so that we can all get along. You know, he's, he's my cousin, he's, he's family. Um, but you know, we, we're not trying to put anybody's business out there. You know, we're all grown men and we're all, you know, we have to take responsibility in our own lives to just, you know, figure things out. And for, for quite some time now with, you know, it's always just been, there's, there's just been tension in the band. And, and it, when we had to write this record, it was just with the mindset of like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll just, we'll start the record. Maybe we'll just get things going and, and we'll figure this out, right? COVID, all this stuff is, life is crazy right now, but everybody wants to be in this band. And so we'll fight for it. Um, and then, you know, as things happen, it's just, uh, it hasn't happened yet, but He's, he'll always be the drummer of this band. It's, it, the seat is his when he wants it. It's just, you know, I think all these years later, we just all have to be on the same, um, you know, headspace together. So I hope that that's sooner than later. So now you have a, a new drummer. It's Alex Lopez, I think. He's the previous Suicide yeah. Silence drummer. Tell us more how it was involved uh, on, on the band, in, in the band. Um, I think he had reached out to Marcos um, a while ago, just just as friends, you know. Um, I think he was even just to help out drum teching or doing whatever. He, I think he was just wanted. He was just I think he was tired of that world that he was in, um, you know, because he's been grinding for a long time, you know. And he's married to Tatiana from Ginger, and I think they Marcos and him just started hanging out. Uh, I was supposed to hang out too. Tatiana came down. And instantly, you know, they all became part of the POD family, Ginger POD family. Um, and then, you know, when the time came and to start to start doing live shows, we just said, hey, are, you know, are, would would you want to give it a shot? We, we need a drummer right now. You know, and so he he helped us out. He's been filling in for about two years now. Um, but again, like I said, it's just it, it, to, we I love playing with Alex and we're You know, we've it's been so much, so much fun, but, you know, we're still waiting to see what happens <laughs> with POD as POD, you know, <laughs> maybe it's just this album cycle, who knows, you know, but, you know, and in the meanwhile, Alex is amazing and he's such a talented drummer and, you know, along with him, you know, we've been able to, to know Tatiana and the whole ginger camp. So it's, it's been awesome. Absolutely. Uh, so um, uh, in this new album, there is the DNA of the pod, uh, sound have your guitars following by flange guitar arpeggios um mm. that's why we like the band so tell us more about the songwriting process mm -hmm. and who bring the main ideas in, in the new songs this album was completely different for us um because 
you know, uh, Love wasn't there because Trey, he moved right before COVID to Nashville. You know, we're so used to sitting in the same room and writing together was completely different. And so when, you know, when the record label said, you guys need to write a record, it was like, uh, that's kind of impossible. We're (laughs) in the middle of COVID, you know, (laughs) Trey's not even here, you know, there's internal drama going on. And it was like, the only way to do that was like, Hey, well, maybe Marcos and I can drive up to LA, you know, once a month and start putting down ideas because now with technology, it's so much different, you know, before we would write a whole record and then we'd bring it and go record it. Now, nowadays with computers and technology, we, it was as simple as just starting with some guitar riffs and a vocal idea or, you know, and, and then putting down a bass line. Nowadays, you can build the drums right here on your computer to, to at least hold the backbeat, you know, to at least hold the tempo. You know, you, you put a, a bass line down to keep the song. And by the end of the day, you pretty much have 75 percent, you know, of the song done. And then later was is where, you know, we lay down the vocals or, you know, after sitting with the music for a little while. You know, Marcos has always been good at coming in and and. And sometimes he'll add too much. You know, we're like, hey, let me, I haven't even put the vocals in yet. Like, you know, he's he's already painting the whole picture and making it so beautiful. And it's like, hey, leave leave some space in there for, for me, you know? <laughs> but, but that's Marcos. It's like, that's the creative side of him. It, it really does come naturally. You know, you, you lay down the basic, not a basic, but you lay down a, a guitar idea. And then all of a sudden, Marcos is like, wait a minute, I want to put this over the top. Wait a minute, I want to put this over the top. And he's just coloring this this painting, you know. And like I said, sometimes it'll be like, "Hey, let me let me jump in there for a second, you know. But it's easy. It, it, it was a it was it was fun to write this record, and, and a different way to record. Absolutely, it's not uh, and, and totally all, all, different. Yeah, all, all together in a rehearsal room, it was not like 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 that. Yeah, yeah, it's different now. Uh, so let's talk about some songs of the album. Um, one of our favorite is "Afraid to Die." Um, mm. um, because the chorus of the chorus reminds the use of the nation. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so t- tell us more about this song and how Tatiana, the ginger singer, was involved in it. Uh, I mean, this, we had the song done already, but because, you know, the, the chorus is saying, it's saying we, we're not afraid. It's this big unity. We we knew we wanted the gang vocal. And then at some point we're like, hey, we need a female vocal because it's we're not just a gang of just all men. You know what I mean? We're, we we need our strong women as well, you know? And we wanted to have that female vocal in there. Um, and because Tatiana um, is married to Alex and they're part of our family, um, it just, we just asked the same thing. Hey, we're looking, this is what we're looking for. Would you, would you want to do it? And she agreed. And so she came in and, um, you know, we had her do the pre-chorus. We had her be part of the gang vocal, um, and then part of the bridge. And she's, she's amazing. I don't know if you've seen Ginger before, but she's, man, everything she does, you know, uh, from singing to just, she's got this scream like a lion, you know? And so you hear that on this song and, uh, you know, and at the time is right when um, everything was still happening or just still fresh with U- Ukraine and Russia. So that, that brought a whole different element and spirit to the song as well. Um, you know, showing our support for her and for Ukraine and for the ginger family. And so it just, it just, it was meant to be. Absolutely. So um, tell us more about Randy. Blitz was involved in the song mm-hmm. drop. Yeah. Um, same thing with Randy. we we love him and his band, and he's you know, he's just the sweetest guy. He's into all different kinds of music. Um, he's just he's a sweetheart. Uh and we didn't ever we didn't have it planned, but we we thought of him and then uh, when the song was pretty much done, uh and so I just text him and I said, Hey, I know you're busy, you know, touring and stuff. And, but we have, we have a song I'd like you to hear Maybe if you, you know, if you want to jump, jump in on it. And he said, send me the song. And I sent it to him and he wrote back and said, I'm, I'm in, you know, it's just, and so it's that thing you have Lamb of God and POD. And it's like to a lot of people it was probably a shock that Randy's on our, our record. Cause they just think of him as Randy from Lamb of God, you know, but if you know him, you know, he's a huge 
bad brains fan. You know, he walks around, he's got his like Bauhaus shirt. You know what I mean? He's more into all this stuff that maybe metalheads aren't into, you know? And so when he said, yes, we just knew, oh, he's going to, he's going to send this song over the top. And so again, with technology, it's easy. You don't, we don't even have to be in the same studio. You just send over exactly. the MP3. Yeah. Plug in your microphone, <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do like four to five, six tracks, send it back. We, we clean it up and it's like he was there the whole time, you know? Absolutely. Um, so uh, when you will play those songs live, Randy will not be there. Yes. Uh, Tatiana also will not be there. So how you manage uh, to to play those songs live? Well, we were we were playing drop for a year and a half now. We've been playing drop, and so I would just do Randy's parts. Um, but just recently you know, with Alex being experienced in this world, we've been able to, and we've never done this before, but, you know, it's kind of like uh, you got to go with the times, you know, especially now with, um, we've always been, like you said, very ambient on our records. And then it's always been hard to duplicate that live because that was a studio moment, you know, exactly. and we're very raw, but we've gone 32 years with being raw. So now it's like, Hey, we're flirting in a different direction. And so I, I want to say not even a year now, we have been playing to, um, we have tracks now. We, we've, we've never played to a click before. So now we're all playing to a click. It's a whole different world, a whole different oh. experience. But yeah, but it allows us to, I mean, whatever. If that if that failed and it, the system blew up, nothing changes, right? We, we still play. We can still do our thing. But now because... We wanted to feature Randy's vocals. We want to feature Tatiana's vocals. We, you know, there is a lot of loops on this record and sounds and, and ambient noises that we didn't want to not play anymore. And so um, we decided to put those little things and keep them in there. And so it's a whole new world for us. But I mean, we've been watching bands do it for the past, you know, 20 years and we've always kind of frowned on it. Um, but nowadays, It's it's just a it's just a different rock world, you know. And so we we're kind of just how do you compete with these bands that sound perfect? I mean, we don't want to sound perfect. I mean, that's not that's never we want to sound like us. But these are all just ways that you know we can have Randy in there. You know, we can have Tatiana in the chorus. Um, so it from what I from what I've gathered so far, it's it's pretty pretty amazing what 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 those little things do. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so let's talk yeah. about the lyrics of the song. Uh, I selected two songs that I want to talk about. So uh, I got that undying wildfire light that you need. I got that stay high butterflies vibes you can feel. This is taken from I got that. <laughs> tell, tell, tell us more about the lyrics of this song. Uh, I mean, that's that's one of those kind of um, it's one of those floss, you know, you always have that kind of POD always does one song that kind of says, you know, we're, we're POD. There's nothing like us, <laughs> love us or hate us. It, it, it's, it's undeniable, right? It's just one of those songs that's saying, dude, that's, that's our style. You know what I mean? Um, it has the element of my lyrics will always have the element of my faith. My faith is everything to me. The same that, you know, my wife and my kids are everything to me. You know, it's, You're never going to get me without without them, you know. So, so musically, you're always going to get the source of my my power, and that's my my faith in God. You know, I'm ne I'm never trying to tell anybody how to live their life, but I'm also saying, you know, some of you don't have that power, and and it's yours for the taking. So, um, this is just one of those songs that encompass all of that, you know. Um, Yeah, it just that's the style of POD. Mm. Great spirit, great great mindset. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there's another uh, piece of song. It's the song "Breaking." You wrote, "You can mm -hmm. choose the life, life and success, or death and disaster." Do you think that everybody, each one of us, is master of his destiny? Because I mean, you, wrote, I think God is you, the... you can choose life and success or death or disaster. That means that we can choose our destiny. Well, it means, it means what 
comes with that. I mean, you, you can choose life. I, I don't, I think God is the master of our destiny. And once you put your, your, your hand or you put your faith into God's hands, you're trusting God. If, if he, if you believe that he created you for a reason and for a purpose and he's all knowing, then I trust him to light my path and I trust him to guide. But God is, he is not a God of force. He is not a, God wants you to choose everything in life. You choose, you choose to love God. You choose to hate God. You choose to follow him. You choose to deny him. You know, you choose uh, ketchup or mustard. It's your, it's your choice. Of, you know, you choose vegetables or, you know, fried food. <laughs> it's, it's your choice, but everything leads you in a, in a direction or in, in a path. Um, you know, I, I believe in that line is more saying, you know, it's, it's like that crossroads. Hey, you can have all these things in life. You can, you can go after all these things, but is it worth it? You know, um, you know, the Bible says that you can gain the whole world, but lose your own soul. And are you someone who wants money, fame, um, material things? Or are you someone who thinks of the eternal? I'm someone who thinks of the eternal, you know? So it's it's just asking the question. It's just posing the question again, what's your choice, life or death? You know, because if you choose life in this direction, well, that comes with everything that comes with that, the struggle, the hard times, everything that comes with life. But the end is life. Sometimes when we choose death, we get to have a good time all the way, <laughs> all the way to death. We get to do what we want, right? Nobody else matters but you. But at the end, if you believe that I believe, there's you still have to answer for it. So, you know, is it is it worth it? That's all. Great, fantastic. And it might seem like it's worth it when you're there. I know, I know it is. People always say, you know, when they talk about sin, sin being death. But the hard part is that sin is fun, you know. Uh, Sin is enticing. It's that's why it's thin because it's nobody hates it or nobody doesn't want to do it. Pleasure is pleasure, but at the same time, is it worth where it leads you in life? You know, or do you choose? What I say is the, is the hard road. You know, absolutely. Thanks for for this information about it. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the cover artwork. Um, why did you mm. choose? this girl without the eyes um it's actually a, it's actually a, a a young boy but i guess maybe because uh, the eyes aren't there it's a little hard to tell uh, I, I, it's, it's a young boy <laughs> but, okay yeah. <laughs> young boy yeah 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 um but we but in a way i guess it does I, i guess it doesn't matter because it really doesn't matter it's just it's more representing uh um youth and innocence right um and and with the first glance it's obvious that it's all oh, this is this is probably the darkest cover pod's ever had it oh this album must be heavier it's just whatever you're you know you you think but on the flip side of that it really is more innocent it's you know it's saying that we're here you have this child who is searching for truth you know you have you have this child um you know they say that and you can interpret it however you you want i'm just saying this these are some of the thoughts behind it you know they say that you know the the eyes are the the gateway to our soul you know it's the window um to the inner us and so again with everything in this world and this life that's just it's defeating you know it's it's crushing our children it's crushing us as adults everything that we have to face in life you know new with technology with everything that we see you got wars everywhere you you know People hate each other everywhere you go. Religion is, you know, this and that, politics. And so, you know, where when the kids are facing this, it's that's it. It's that we're robbing them of their young, of their youth, of their innocence. Um, and they can't even think for themselves. You know, most adults can't even think for themselves. Um, and so that's one, that's one way to took it, take it. Um, you know, another way is to say that the truth is is blind. Um You know, and I, I, I know that for me, I always hear this a lot, especially with, you know, whatever, reality TV or certain people. It seems like when anybody is not backed up by facts or reality, <laughs> it's always like, well, that's my truth and that's it. 
it, that's that's how you end a discussion. You know, you can just say, well, I don't care what you think. That's my truth. And that's it. And I, I can't stand that because that doesn't make it true. Mm, you know, exactly. it, doesn't, it doesn't just because you say that, oh, ice is hot. That doesn't make it true. Absolutely. But we live in a society now that says, no, ice is hot. I say ice is hot, so it's hot. And that's not reality. And so how do you, where, where do we go from there? If you're not even realistic anymore and your, your, your ideologies aren't even, they're, they're not realistic. It's just, it's just selfish or it's just, you just want to be right to be right. I don't, I don't want to be right to be right. I want to be, I hope that I'm right so that humankind can flourish. <laughs> you know, uh, the world can move on in peace. Like, because there has to be a truth behind that. But if it's just whatever you say that make, puts money in your pocket or makes you right or, or, or puts you in front of the line, I don't want to be right if that's the case. I'd rather, be, <laughs> I'd rather take less and, 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 and accept the truth than, than, than have to be right. And that's why we have that song, too. It's called Dead Right. People will, even when they know that they're wrong, they can't admit it. They have to say, nope, nope, that's my truth. And it's like, where, how do we, how do we, where's the progress in that? And you, you see that in American culture with, with politics. Absolutely. We, can't even dis, we can't even discuss things anymore. It's like, well, if you don't agree with me, you're evil and you're wrong. And even the things, I mean, I, I always hate to, Try to, I don't want to be political or I don't want to be religious, but the Bible does say that in this, this day and age that, that we will call good evil and we will call evil good. And when I look around me, it's things that so many years ago we'd be like, no, man, that's wrong. That's wrong. And everybody agreed. No, that's wrong. It doesn't matter what religion you were. It doesn't matter what political party you were, what country you were from. As human beings, we can say that's wrong and we won't stand for that. And now it's like, well, let's wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's all perspective. It's it's my truth versus your truth. And it's like, no. Did you know that, not to get crazy, but I think it's in, I don't know if it's California or up in one of the states, they're trying to make it a lesser crime for, for any type of sexual assault. They're trying to not make it um, a federal crime. They're not trying to make it a big crime. It, you get a slap on the hand. That's wrong. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 wrong. And or there's people saying, um, "Wait a minute," you know, uh, trying to blur the lines between uh, 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 pedophiles and saying, "Well, well let, let's discuss it." No, that's wrong. You, that's wrong. That's a child. That's wrong. But no one wants to stand up for, for what is good and for what is right. And they're calling good evil and evil good. So where are the people that are saying, dude, that's, I don't care what you say, lock me up in prison, throw away the key. You will not get me to agree that that is right because mm -hmm. my soul knows that it's wrong. And it doesn't matter how much money you give me. It doesn't matter how famous you make me. I will not go against God. <laughs> I will not go against human beings and say, that's right when it's not. And so that's just, that's my take on it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and why do you think people have been martyred for what they believe in? Because they would rather die for what is right and for what is true than to follow what the world says is right, knowing that, again, you either choose life or you choose death. Um, so let's talk about touring. Let's talk mm -hmm. about touring. Um, we know that you will tour the USA, uh, in May, uh, yeah. and then, and then play some European festival this summer, but nothing in France. So, uh, we haven't seen any, any, any gig in France. So any chances to have mm -hmm. you here in France or not? We will be announcing uh, a European tour, ho hopefully this month. I think we'll announce it this month. Um, I'm trying to remember if I seen, I know it, at some points there was, uh, and there's, there's 
still might be a, a hold on a, on a, on a France date. Um, but I think everybody's fighting, you know, the, everybody that's doing the festivals, everybody's fighting to play shows in between. And so here we are, same thing. We're trying to squeeze in as many headline shows as we can. Um, but I, I do know, I do know one thing that, you know, with our last record circles, we had a, we had a very strong European um, presence exactly. with that record. And I know that's going to exactly. happen with this record. I mean, we, we toured twice in 2019 and in all of our career, we never went to Europe twice in one year. So that was hopeful for us, you know, um, with this record, we're hopeful again that, um, I mean, not only will we go over and do a headline stuff, but who knows, uh, we would, we would love to support a band on a, on an even greater scale, you know, over there, but it's just, the record just has to release, you know, we have to keep talking about it and getting, getting excited about it. But I know for sure um, we'll, we'll be back in France for sure. For the European tour, you plan to, to do it on, on 24 or 2025? A lot of it, a lot of it all stems from, how well the record does when it releases, you know, um, and, and the response. And right now okay. it's, it's super promising. I mean, we'll be touring for the next two years. If it's not, if it's not the end of 24, yes, it'll definitely be, you know, the beginning of 25. So, um, but for us, it's like, we, we're ready now. We're ready. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't have to ask us twice, but everything, you know, everything matters. It's all, you know, just like the States, you know, everything matters. The, the cost of fuel, the, the, the cost of, of of you know tour buses yeah. now have all yeah, triples and it's it's crazy yeah. we were just putting our schedule for or our, our budget for europe and it's like wow I, but this is all after effects of covid you know and you know people now could barely afford the ticket to the to the show let alone buy a t-shirt you know or you know what i mean so it's just there's a lot of changes happening Absolutely. and and it, you know i think this kind of leads to the whole uh, Spotify and streaming, you know, once you start, once you start paying these artists for the work that they've created, a lot of these things won't matter. But for bands like me that survive off of touring, you know, people are like, well, come back to South America, come back to Asia. It's like, we, I'll come back to those places tomorrow, but economically it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yes, you know what I mean? Sense. Because by the time we go, sometimes it's like you, it's either even, or we, we end up make, we end up, pain and like as much as we love it we want to you know it, it's just not economically feasible with Absolutely. the cost of living for for every every person not not it's, it's but like i said once they figure out yeah and once they but once they figure out a way how to pay our these artists for their for their work and their music um then maybe we could go over and you know it's not always about a profit it's it's more like hey no i I'm, you know, I, I have enough money that I can go and not make a profit because I just want to go. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to play in France, you know. <laughs> Let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. Yeah, so, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Sony. Uh, we love a lot, Veritas. Um, I am a big Aww. fan. I'm a huge fan of POD from the beginning, from Satellite. And uh, so uh, it's it's an honor for me to have you an interview. And uh, uh, I hope you to see you. Uh, very soon here in, in, in Europe and in France, of course. Uh, yes. Thank you thank very much. You. We love a lot Veritas. It's a very good album. Very. Oh, fantastic. thank you, brother. It's it's so great talking to you again. I appreciate the love. Thank you very much, and see you soon, Sonny. Okay, brother. See you Bye. soon, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye.